Okay, second one I call low. Let's go take a look. On tape. See, it's about an inch to the right, maybe even only a half inch. I want to go left for one inch at 25. I'll try four clicks. And then three and a half inches down, three and a half times four, so 14 click down. That's assuming these are one minute clicks. Off safe. Okay, on safe. Check target. Low and right on the second one, but anyhow, it should be in the zone, right in the zone. Yeah, so I like to use two shot groups. Um, this was the first group. Second group, I was going down half the quantity because I thought maybe they were one minute clicks, they're half minute clicks. And I went right instead of left because I was reading the dial wrong. Read the dial correct, last two shots. Two shot groups, really, I mean, if you're a confident shooter, a one shot group should kind of be enough, but two just kind of verifies a little better. Um, once you've got some level of confidence, yeah, a five shot group for this purpose shouldn't be necessary. We still have yet to reach out to 100. Okay, we got it zeroed in pretty well at 30 yards, 25 to 30, something like that. And we're going to reach it out to 100 on some of these jugs. But uh, before that, I want to try it at this distance, which is about 85 yards. I want to mention that about 85 yards because it seems really often the shooting world thinks and at ranges it's set up this way in 50 yard increments or 25 yard increments. But the real world doesn't present itself to us that way. So we need to be dealing with that. In any case, I got a nice rest here in the form of my pickup. So I'm gonna take a few shots and put them on target and see what happens. By the way, so far after a good cleaning and oiling, this carbine, this new inland manufacturing carbine, has not missed a beat. We've fired, what, about 20 rounds with it so far. I mean, big deal, 20 rounds, right? But last time we were out with this, it was jamming. It could hardly make it through three shots without jamming. So I think it's, it's running real good. And I wanted to bring that up. Somebody in comments said, Oh, you should take that video down. It's bad for you. It's bad for inland. And, uh, but you know what? Guns jam. And I'm not going to edit all that stuff out. I'm going to mention it. I'm going to mention why it jammed. The gun was not really clean and it hadn't been oiled in months and months and months. And so it was dry and it had some fouling in it. And a lot of times the gun will function fine in that state, but a 30 carbine no, it likes to be clean, and it likes to have some lubrication. Anyhow, here we go. I got a round chamber, safety in the extreme danger position, and I'm gonna crank off a couple or three. We'll see how it goes. I can't really see that bullseye. I can see the vertical and the horizontal bars, so I'm just gonna center the dot that way that felt good okay I'd say my visual 
sort of aiming accuracy with the dot. It's a little bit of astigmatism without perfect correction. <laughs> Probably about three inches and 85 yards like this. We'll go take a look. Unsafe. Magazine out. Gun empty. Okay, at 85, got one right there. These were our 30 yard bullet holes. At 85, I got one here and one here. They're a little over an inch apart. I'm happy. And it's dead, I mean, pretty much dead center. So, another 15 yards to the jugs. I'm not going to see that as a problem. So, I got a definitely a good 100 yard zero, I would say, and probably, you know, more than that. But we're just about out of space at this particular place for 100 yards. Something else I wanted to mention was dot brightness. You know, these aim point sights are always, they have more than enough available brightness to be able to see it in all conditions, you know, wintertime in the snow and sunlight, you name it. Shooting from a dark area into a bright area, whatever. As long as you can see the target, you got a good dot there visible. But when trying to shoot for group at distance, and by distance, you know, we did the 85 yards. And uh, for better, more accurate aiming, you turn the dot down to not the bare minimum you can barely see, but pretty close to that. And it will appear smaller and it won't bloom in your eyesight as much. And you'll be able to aim with a little more precision. That was a tip somebody gave me years and years ago, and I just wanted to pass that along. Okay, I'm going to offhand these first two. They're about, what, 25 and 30-ish yards? Now these are out closer, past 50 yards. Shooting through some weeds, some brush. That's my pre-excuse for missing. Surely that was a hit. Click. Okay, the gun is not in full battery. What happened there, people? I wanted to point out here that you can see I'm often monopoding, meaning that I'm using the magazine as a monopod against the top of the pickup there. And after this shoot, I went home and I checked this using an empty magazine. And I just held the bolt back and shoved the magazine up in there and tried various lowerings of the bolt, you know, dropping the bolt into battery, slow and fast and all of that. And I found I could actually hold the bolt back with the rear wall of the magazine if I shoved it up into the action with not very much force, about what's being used here when monopotting. And so, until we study this further, I will attribute both of those malfunctions in this video to my monopotting, as I call it, the mag against the hood of the pickup. It might be a good idea to obtain a 10-round magazine, like they ship for the California-compliant carbines. Uh, they're readily available. If you are in a situation where you might end up using an expedient rest, like the hood of a pickup or a log or etc., or the ground or shooting prone, you might want to invest in a couple 10 round magazines. Keep the magazine up out of the dirt, off the log, or whatever rest you're using, and it could avoid a malfunction like this. 
also it has to be understood that the cycling energy of the 30 carbine compared to something like an AK or an AR or many 14 whatever any of these larger caliber carbines or rifles the little 30 carbine cartridge has very little energy to begin with and so you start tapping it off for a gas operation you know there's just not a lot there to work with the mass that's in motion is lower it's at a lower velocity there's less spring tension behind it you know an AK action would just blow right past the kind of obstructions that I'm talking about here that will actually stop the forward motion of the bolt on a 30 carbine yeah I'm exposing myself well the primer was not touched okay <coughs> No, the smaller ones are farthest away. Well, that's uh, one quart on the left on top of that stump. It's about what, 65 yards? I don't know. I guess I should chamber around, huh? Booyah. Now this next one is what, a 12 ouncer? One of those thin cylindrical bottles. I was going to say I was going to be really impressed with myself if I hit it, but I done hit it. Okay. Let's move on out to greater distances. Okay. They get farther and smaller. <clears throat> Try the one that I can hardly see in the bushes. Well, it fell over. And we got our first real jam. Okay. This one's easier to see, then I have no excuse. Flash. All right. All right. So this one's at about what? 85, 90 yards. Somewhere in that vicinity. See if I can hit it one shot. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Well, that shouldn't have been all that challenging, right? But I'll celebrate anyway. Now, we got two more and a hundred yards. Okay, gonna have to move back over here toward the cab. I could move the pickup, but this makes it more challenging. I think that red jug, I'll have no problem getting a clear shot at it, but the other one on the right, there's that little 15 foot pine tree about halfway. If I nick those needles, it looks like the tips of those needles are in the way of the jug. If I nick those, that's going to throw the shot off. Well, that's a pre-excuse for missing, but no, that's really a fact. Okay, I'm going to try the red one first. I've got the antenna in my face. Adds to the real world aspect, doesn't it? Oh boy, I'm going to turn that dot down a little bit. See what we can do. Take it off safe, that helps. So there's there's a safety issue. If I really had to make that shot and it was on safe, that would be dangerous because I would not make the shot. <laughs> Doesn't appear to have connected. I seem to be missing. So should I start bracketing? Aim a little high, aim a little low. We'll see. We'll try aiming a little high. Nope. I'll 
we'll try aiming a little low. That did it. Okay, next one's the real challenge. I'll try aiming a little low, but that's going to put me right in those pine needles. Nailed it. Beautiful. Well, that red one was tough. So, we seem to be dead on at 85. How could it be high at 100? Well, that's a question for further study, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I was... A lot of those shots on that red jug felt great. One after another miss, however. And I aim low, bingo. Aim low on the second one, very first shot, no problem. This is why it's important to fire your rifle at various random distances. Of course, 100 yards is not a random distance. We could have zeroed it at 100 yards, you know. But we're just trying to throw some... What if this is all I had? If I only had 85 yards, would that be enough? Would that equate to a 100 yard zero? Well, apparently not. Okay. So what did we learn today? Well, shooting targets at random distances, I think is a good idea. We zeroed at 85 yards, didn't have any problem hitting targets at 85 yards, obviously. A little bit of aiming error at 100. Um, once I figured it out, it was two hits in a row. So, you know, it, I've heard people, you know, zero at some shorter distance and say, well, that's good for 200 yards, you know, zero, at, you know, a couple inches high at 100 or whatever with a hunting rifle. See, that's good for 200 or 300 yards. I think that's a terrible way to use a rifle. I think you zero it at the longest range you anticipate sh shooting, you know. In the case of a carbine, that could be 200 yards, you know, pretty easily. I mean, it's your choice, right? If you're going to shoot out to 100 yards, zero it at 100 yards. We zeroed at 85. Wasn't quite right for 100, but it was close. Or, you know, you get used to where it hits at these various distances, then you, you don't miss, right? You, you know, I had to hold low it seemed to me um, but uh, other than that one thing we did learn for sure it's a lot of fun and these targets from 20 to 70 to 85 yards no problem almost every single one of them was one shot one hit and uh, that speaks well for the New Inland carbine it speaks well for the Ultimax system and the aim point and maybe a little bit for the shooter too but uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. If you have a place like this where you can have random distances, not necessarily an organized range, you know. And on that note, we were criticized for safety. Um, thank you. I mean, it's legitimate criticism given what you saw, but um, you weren't there. Uh, the cameraman was very well aware of where the muzzle was pointed. He was alongside the rifle, holding the camera, like in here. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll try to be more obvious about our safe handling. And uh, I brought the motorcycle today. There's another thing. If you're concerned about my safety, did you notice that I was not wearing a helmet or any protective gear? Because, you know, if you didn't, then maybe your focus is a little too narrow. Statistically, my chances of getting injured or killed were much greater on the ride out here than they were while we were at the range. I just wanted to point that out. I'm not opposed to what some people call safety Nazis when it's vitally necessary, as in a, a range that's in a suburban or urban area. I know of one in Kenmore, Washington. They have to be extremely safety Nazi-like, and it's necessary um, out here it's a little different. Please keep that in mind. I can understand it both ways, and I hope you all will too. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.